Hi, this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. We're continuing with our candidate interviews, and joining me today is Matthew Sellers, who is an independent running for the House of Representatives for Washington Five. Welcome. Hi, Pat. Thank Hi. You. There's a lot of independents running this year. Yes, uh, a big people, surprise. Yeah, I, I was looking, I realized one day we had four or five guests and there two or three of them were independents. I went, what is happening? Why, why did you choose to run as an independent? Uh, independent, I had a dear colleague of mine who lives in Middlesex who suggested that I run as an independent. Republicans won't have a chance, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, in my district, there's a lot of Democrats in my area. Right. Um, so, you know, I have a slight leaning towards libertarian policies, but that was definitely not going to work. Right. So I, you know, I'm always been kind of a middle of the road gentleman in a sense. Right. And independent, you really can't get right. much more middle. Has of the road. that impacted your ability to um, collect funds to yes. camp? Yeah, because when you say Republican or Democrat or progressive, people have an idea in general of what you stand for. Yeah. But independent, you can sort of... It's no party affiliation. Yeah, you right. Know, if you want to talk about people walk, working with both sides of the aisle... Right. You're you know, in the middle of the that's aisle. That's what an independent <laughs> will do. I don't know if we have an aisle. <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I When I considered it, as I thought immediately, I was like, well... Bernie Sanders did it for a very long time, right. and he was quite successful. And we all knew where he stood, so there he was. Exactly. I would give him credit as I much as I, I am not a supporter. But that man hasn't changed his platform like once. I mean, he's, yeah. he's stuck to what he believes in the whole time. So exactly. for that, I give him a lot of credit. Right. No flip-flopping with Bernie. It's just straight yeah. out. So anyway, I've sort of that, mixed up the questions good. already. Would you, um, would you tell people a little bit about yourself? Well, I Sorry. am a 52-year-old, blue-collar type of guy. I have spent the last 30-some-odd years working with alternative medicine. Um, I'm a massage therapist, uh, therapeutic specifically, th yeah. therapeutic massage therapist, body worker. I've been doing that for the last 20 years. Right. Um, but I've been paying attention to advocating for my own health since I was in my 20s. Um, and I saw massage therapy as kind of a vehicle to get me further in that field. Right. I had, <clears throat> didn't, I came from blue workers, so I didn't have a lot of college aspects. Medical school wasn't really part right. of my scheme. Um, so I did the working route and I've Nothing been, wrong with that, may nope, I say. No, not at all. Yes. Uh, I've been very successful yeah, with the massage therapy. I had an interesting show when we were doing a couple of shows for the state. They asked us to do shows on the opioid crisis, mm -hmm. and I, I had several doctors here, and they were telling me how medicine now includes and pays for um, alternative medicines, that they realize that not just the, here's the pills, um, you know, go home and take two aspirin kind of mm -hmm. thing, it, it's not working as well because you gotta get people um, to buy into what you're doing for them, and if it massage works, which in my case, I was telling you before the show that that really works for me with my lymphedema, right. and um, and they they are now encompassing all of this alternative medicine mm -hmm. into a patient's treatment, the the whole body, mm -hmm. not the not absolutely. Just, yeah, so I think that's one, great. It's actually one of my concerns and platforms. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, uh, medical oh. assisted therapy. Um, it is supplying medications that are you know, opiate similarities to help people get off of the harder stuff, right. you know. Um, I believe there is room for improvement. I think, you know, even during COVID, um, prescribers were writing three-month-long supplies for individuals without requiring them to go to therapy oh, to right. help better them right. to get them out of that situation. Right. So hopefully things start to pick up for folks, but I'm looking to bring more evidence-based solutions to actually helping people with the addictive part as opposed to just medicating it. Yeah, good. I think that makes a lot of sense. Could you talk about some of your other priorities for um, the house? Well, one of, I, obviously, uh, we have uh, an ongoing situation <laughs> that is continuing to unfold uh, with coronavirus and our economy and right. We're getting ready to move into the winter months, and I 
you know, I know our restaurants are already struggling. Right. Our places where we converge as a community are struggling. Um, so I think we're going to have more more to work out by the time January comes around. Yeah. Um, so as far as priorities are concerned, if I were elected, I would be looking, you know, it's like, what's the problem that we have to deal with first? Right. Um, what's at the top of the pile? Right. You know, now that we're starting here, what's, what do we need to do? Right. If it's the economy, we need to shift our efforts into fixing the economy. Right. Um, one of my platforms before this began uh, was uh, the medical assisted therapy, but it's also um, helping people with medical choice and informed consent. I don't know if you're familiar with those issues right now. There is actually a bill on the House, uh, I believe it's in the Health Care Committee, um, to uh, require informed consent in the state of Vermont for medical procedures, all medical procedures. 100% back that. Um, a lot of people do, but yeah. right now it is not required. I didn't know that. It is because not required. you know what my, I dread, I love my family dearly, but I've seen too many times where the patient's in the room and the family's outside in the hall talking to the doctor about what they want to see happen to the patient in the room. Right. And when I'm the patient in the room, I'm like, no, no, no. I make my decisions. Thank you very much. Right, exactly. Right? I mean, at least as long as I'm of sound body and mind There's, or whatever. That's kind of the trick to yeah. it. But we're, right. we're, we're talking something as similar as medications. Right. You know, right. Um, if you don't read the label or if your doctor doesn't let you know what all the right. effects are or side effects, you could be taking something that could right. injure you. Right. And a lot of drugs, could you ever read the PDR, the physician's death reference, whenever I get a new drug, I go read it, and it's scary, you know, up to and including death. Right. I like that. So, right. <laughs> so oh, that, was, nice. that was, you know, an important issue for me yeah. up until corona started. Yeah. You know, and now we're looking at our economy where we have farming issues. We had right. a, a line eight some hours long oh at right. the airport for, for the people food. who needed food. Yeah. I don't think Vermont went through that in the 1930s during the Great Depression. That scared me seeing that line. Mm -hmm. And then I found out from the John Sayles from the food bank that one in every four Vermonters suffers from food insufficiency. So when you're looking at the McMansion and thinking those people have it all, mm -hmm. maybe not. Because no. you don't know what's happening behind the closed doors. And food is the first thing you can cut back on without anybody necessarily knowing it because you've got to mm -hmm. pay for the car and the house and the heat. So um, right. everybody knows somebody if it's one out of four. Right. So it's pretty uh, scary. Two to three American, two out of three Americans are suffering right now yeah, right. because right. of that COVID. That would make sense. Some some financial distress for right. two out of three. I would just think Americans. in a farm state, <laughs> we could do better. I I like the agriculture aspect. Uh, People got to eat. I right. see a lot of empty meadows. I see a lot of, um, I almost opened a butcher shop here in Montpelier a few years ago. Oh my gosh, I wish you had done that. So do I. It yeah. was rather cost prohibitive. Uh, a lot of regulations. Yeah. It was just a little too scary for my financial backing at that point. But yeah. it's, I saw an opportunity where yeah. it could create revenue. There would be, I, there would be dotted with right. more and people providing. And local farmers would exactly, love it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so. mm, I like that idea. Um, so you were talking about when you get in, what's going to be the priority. I think the first priority is going to be the budget because this year's budget, we had a little extra money left over, I understand, and we also had the rainy day fund that we could borrow next year because of COVID, because of the, the revenue falling, expenses rising. You're going to have your hands full. What, mm -hmm. what were you thinking about that you would consider recommending for revenue increase or expense reduction? I'm more of an expense reduction Good. type of guy. Right. Um, revenue increases, I don't want to tax Vermonters any more than we already are. Right. I actually, uh, why would you? Right. We, we already don't have a right. lot of money to, to spare. Right. Um, the embedded taxes alone in Vermont are crushing some right. people. So as in any household budget, if you didn't make enough money that month, you're cutting something out. So if we don't have the, you can't spend what you don't have, right. otherwise we just continue to fall into debt. I think we debt. all learned that, but we forgot it. It's a speed bump we keep bumping into, I right. think. Eventually it's mm -hmm. gonna become a guardrail and yeah. you know that could cause trouble. Big so I, I hear a lot of some of our incumbent politicians saying that we shouldn't cut, um, 
cut programs, which means we would still spend money on them. Right. Um, but if we don't have but the may money, may I suggest you can combine programs and just have one executive director? That's uh, there's there's a way to cut things that doesn't um, eliminate the support to the to people that exactly because exactly. they do need they need the hand up, not the handout thing. Exactly. And there's a lot of ways to combine. I agree. But, but you just need to. I think we have too many sub right. multi faceted right. committees right. that are costing money that yep. we could be putting elsewhere. Exactly. There you go. Um, so the, glo the governor, I was looking at global warming and it became oh, governor, um, but the governor just vetoed the global warming solution and then the legislature overrode that. What do you think of that act? Have you taken a look at it? And, I have. And what do you think? I appreciated Governor Scott's veto. Um, a lot of us did. I, um, as a youth in my 20s, I worked for Greenpeace. I worked for PERG. Oh, good. Um, I saw a problem. I saw... I'm, I'm a tree hugger. Thank you. I'm happy to admit it. Uh, it I, the earth is our most important resource. Do we have a problem? Yes, we have a problem. It's right. becoming quite apparent. Um, should it be the responsibility of Vermonters to uphold that bill? I don't think so. We live in one of the cleanest states in the nation. Right. We have over twice as much carbon sequestration from the amount of forestry yeah, we right, have. Yeah, no trees, right? Um, do we need to make shifts? Yes, I think this accord makes it kind of a little fast, a little too hard for Vermonters who can't even afford to possibly fix their home to create more energy efficiency. They can't buy an electric car. Right. Mm. Um, this is going to squeeze a lot of Vermonters out of here. This, yeah. I'm, I'm sort of considering how I'm going to be able to stay here. Yeah, right. Um, you know, if it's going to continue to tax us, I know a lot of the proponents of this bill say it's not going to tax us, that it's sort of creating more regulations and, you know, taxing these companies. But we should know by now that companies don't right. absorb the taxes. They spread it to the consumer. Right. And most of our businesses, if they're small, they have a very tiny profit margin. Exactly. But our legislature just doesn't seem to get that part. You know, these people do not like live like pointing fingers, things. but, it, you know, it... it <laughs> And I don't like, if I was a Democrat voting for that policy, it would make me feel good. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm not interested in feel good policies. Right. Feel good policies don't help all people. They help a right. few people. Because what uh, bothers me the most is that Vermont is so small hmm. that we could stand on our head and do absolutely everything possible and we wouldn't change that global warming needle one bit. Not bit. So I don't mind setting examples. I, I I appreciate we have a problem, but you know, I think there are other plastic solutions. bags, straws, what? I think there are other solutions. Yeah. Um, Things it, we can do without killing Increasing ourselves. our economy so people actually have money to invest right, right. in corrective procedures right. to yeah. weatherize their homes. And you know, I have an oil burner. I would love to have the money to switch it to something more efficient right now, right. but I don't. Right. My business is struggling right now right. because of sure. Corona. Right. So I think we need to think of ways of increasing our economy before we think of ways of you know helping globally. Right. Well, that's, if I were to make a recommendation, I'd tell them fix the economy first, just as you suggested. Mm -hmm. Then let's look at what we can do with for global warming. Right. Um, There's a lot of statistics out there saying that the citizenry in itself is not really causing the problem. We have big business, right. our military. They are two of the largest producers of pollution and CO2 on our planet. Right. So. And then we need them. So I need, you, we need them you, too. Can they be a little bit smarter? That? Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. They just don't think this out anyway. Um, we, um, when you were asking me before the show about campaign for Vermont and vote for Vermont, one of the areas that we pushed and supported campaign for Vermont in their effort to get our legislature to sign a bill about ethics Okay. We are one of the only two states in the nation da -da, that, do not, that do not have ethics legislation. And that's just, you know, welcome to Vermont. Um, and so we got them at least to establish an ethics commission. But they need to beef up, I think, they need to beef up this law to, to get it some teeth. And, and mm -hmm. 
I know it's a small state, but you don't know. I don't know what investments you have, where where your money is, is tied in, all your stocks and bonds, right? I don't have any. <laughs> exactly. Me neither. Um, just through my, my retirement. But, um, but so you don't really know somebody's conflict of interest. And so we'd like them to be Is that able to the type of ethics you were talking about? Because we're, I mean, yeah. in the age of BLM and oh, right. well, talking this is more, correctly. And if you've got a conflict of interest of the bill you're supporting and you work for the company, um, or you've got stocks in, you know, I keep picking on Sun Common and I love them, but it's, it's I do. Um, but, uh, you know, if, you, if you've got investments in Sun Common, um, you have to say, sorry, I, I can't vote I have on to this abstain thing. from voting. Right. I don't mind that at all, right. actually. Um, there is so much money being made off of writing laws that benefit right. something that we have a portfolio right. in. It's not my favorite idea. Yeah. I know I was telling other candidates, Jim Condos, who we know is Secretary of State, when he was in the legislature, he would always recuse himself mm. if there was an energy bill because he worked for, um, that's where he worked. So right. um, he always stood up and I always gave him credit for that. He was, uh, but not many others do, but I know there must be something out there that's, you know, these people invest and they have funds, <sighs> some of them. Yeah. I, so, you know what, I will be honest, I am new to this idea of running for yeah. an elected office. Um, I do not know all, all the inner workings of inside that building. Um, I'm very curious and willing yeah. to learn. Good. I was sort of under the impression that there are not a lot of people working with previous issues. There's not a lot of people, quote unquote, on the take. Oh, Vermont. no. If any. No, I would, um, does I would it say that it is not a dishonest group at all. Right. It's not. It's honest. If, is it's it, not. if it's affecting a portfolio, I think reclusing yourself from a vote right. is pretty standard and yeah. quite ethical. Yeah, and I think a lot of times the, those problems happen more locally from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, people owning a lot of land and they're on the, you know, the zoning commission. Correct. Come on. Um, but I think you're right. Everybody in the state has, whether I agree with them or not politically, they all wake up in the morning trying to do the best they can mm -hmm. for Vermont. Yeah. They get a little lost sometimes in the, in the building because they forget sometimes why they're there, but that's more political inside stuff. You'll learn very quickly. Just go eat in the cafeteria once or twice. You'll figure it out real quick. But um, we Looking were hoping forward that, to it. <laughs> where, the, where the bills are really um, made yeah. in, the, in the cafeteria. Um, so we had asked uh, people um, about the, the call for defunding the police and ah. uh, wondered what you, what you would think about that. I, um, I, I understand why people are so mad. Um, police brutality is, it's unacceptable, actually. Right. Right. Um, citizen brutality should also be unacceptable. Resisting arrest is a crime. Um, res when you resist arrest, an officer needs to use a little bit yeah. more force Surprise. to finish his job. Right. Um, so I think in our media that gets a little lost sometimes. I do not agree with de defunding the police. Um, I agree with more education. I believe it takes three months to become a police officer right. in the state of Vermont. It takes 16 weeks to become a state trooper. Mm -hmm. um, What's that? Right. That's not a lot. Right. You can't teach a lot of morals in three months. Um, ethics, you can't right. teach right. a lot of ethics right. in three months. You kind of are hoping that that officer is coming into that program with a history of not wanting to beat people. Yeah just because I've got a job that sort of allows do it. Do you think it's rampant, or do you no. think it's just a few bad apples that the spoil think, the... To be honest with you, I think our media is very capable of picking out very small bits and spreading it so far right. all, over, all over the land that it, it seems like a much bigger deal, yeah. or more people are being um, hurt by right. the police right. than what is actually happening. I mean, one is too many in some of those instances with the, you know, the, the right. knee on the neck and... Uh, uh, Excessive force. Right. That's the guy trained for three months to get right. that job, right. and he works in an inner city. You know, not to mention, I know this is a dirty comment, but um, I think George Floyd was also guilty of oh, for, yes, resisting for sure. arrest yep, a number of times. Yeah, and he has a he has a. a Does it mean of, a death sentence? No, yeah, it shouldn't no. mean a death sentence. Right. Um, so I really think education is a part of it. You know, if we want to talk about defunding the police, I'm not exactly a big fan of militarized police. No. Um, they used right. to be, you know, peacekeepers. Right. Um, 
I don't think Vermont has a lot of militarized police right now. No. Um, so I, if defunding, no. You know, we don't want to defund militarizing the police, yeah. but I would rather see and more I education. Think they're upset about the ones I know. My husband is a retired uh, trooper, um, just for the record, and uh, the ones that he grew up with and served with, and we know now that the other the others that are there in state, but they they don't want those guys in their midst either. And um, so there has to be retraining. If mm -hmm. you mess up, back you go. Yeah. Maybe three strikes and you're out. Um, but uh, that it, that's unacceptable to them. They don't like it either. Because, more training. Yeah. I mean, to walk around having people dislike you just because they don't know you, but they see the uniform, and that's yeah. not fair either. I have a lot more respect for police than yeah. I used to as right. a youngster. And... Um, I, 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 I think it's shameful and yeah. hurtful. Uh, these people are here to protect yeah. us and uphold the law. And all of the random shootings of you know pe police officers being targeted, right. I think it's Oh, that, you know, walking up shameful. to a car? Oh, yep. my God. Shameful. Yeah, there's um, the one thing. I, my cousin comes from Florida. And down there, they will not go anywhere without two. Here in Vermont, our mm. officers travel by themselves to a domestic violence, to right. something that's happened in the woods. To, mm -hmm. And so that's, we add a little extra burden. Plus these days there's mental health issues. Yes, ma'am. And I mean, and sometimes oh, we want to have them act like social workers. And they're not trained for that either. No, so what are we doing? I think training is, a, is the answer. Think, yeah. Because, uh, and maybe it's, maybe just as you're learning and, and you go back for training and you talk about what, what experiences you encountered how you handled it and, and learned uh, that way. So, yes, I agree with that. So I was telling you before we were, uh, uh, Burlington's got some protesters. So I think they still haven't gotten off the, the park. And they were holding up um, um, traffic on Pearl Street. So th that's got to fall to the legislature at some, part, some point. It's, I, I think it's their responsibility. Um, to some extent, with the governor to, to stop this. I went looking for some uh, updated information on what the governor's had to say, and I haven't seen anything since no. July. No. Um, people are allowed to protest. Absolutely. Right? Um, I don't know where these folks are getting their money to be hanging out there all day. I have an idea. Yep. Um, when a protest turns to riot, and is impinging commerce, I think we have a problem. Yep. Um, Martin Luther King did not protest in the dark. That's right. So if you're trying to get something done via protesting, I think peaceful assembly is where it should stay. I've protested. I protested yep. the Gulf War. Yep. I've protested with Greenpeace. You know, it's... Um, it has never gotten to violence. This right. is sort of a, 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 a uncharted waters here right. with the amount of uh, sort of yeah, you don't want to, excessive, you don't want to go excessive in, protesting. Yeah, and be excessive force either to stop it. Um, no. I mean, I don't um, know what the balance is. I think about how do you stop it? Where but, is the balance? I yeah. don't, right now I'm not seeing a big balance. No. I'm seeing a pro, I mean, Portland's been under siege protest oh for over 100 days. Right. I, these, these kids have been in Battery Park for some time. Right. I, over an issue that's already been dealt with according to the law. Right. All right. You right. know. Well, I think the Black Lives Matter issue is long gone. It's just been covered up or buried because we don't hear what they would like to have or see or do. We just see the violence and... Mm -hmm. I agree. Some of us it, of a, well, a certain age don't don't support that. There are other groups that are involved in this. I know right. folks have heard of Antifa, uh, and that Antifa has also slipped into these protests and right. started causing the riots. Right. I think I, I'm tree hugger. Pro, right. Protesting right. peacefully is a, is a right of You'd our be constitution. Proud of me. I protested too. Sorry. I protested, I protested too in yes. Trenton about daycare centers. That was big, a big deal back when I was so going. I think we should be able to protest yep. it's when they get violent. It's sort of stepped over the line. Good job. So, what the sort of last question? Yes, we have a few minutes. What is? Why are you the best candidate for the position, and why should the voters vote for you? 
I love that question. Why? That's that stump question. The one that um, just the elevator. That's stump stage. question. That's probably one of the bigger ones. You know what? I am the type of person that likes to listen to what people have to say. Um, I I have always lived in the middle of the lane. I'm a Libra. I can't not. <laughs> um, it's a balancing act. You know, you are as a legislature, you're supposed to be representing the majority of the people in your con in your group in right. your consist constituents. Um, I'm not so sure that's happening in parts of Vermont. Not anymore. Um, it used to, but not anymore. Yeah. And the more I talk to folks who have been here a long time, that's what they say. Right. It's like we used to be listened to. Um, I moved to Vermont because of a live and let live mentality. The, the clean air, the clean right. water, it's, just, it, it's beautiful here. Right. And the people have always been very genuine and sweet and um, it might take a, a year or two to survive a couple of winters before they invite you over for tea, but <laughs> right. eventually it happens. Right. So I'm not a typical politician. I think that might be kind of obvious at yeah. this point yeah. to many people. Um, why am I the best candidate? Because I want to do something to help all Vermonters. I don't want to appease to business, you know, big business interests. I don't want to appease to quite. I'll just say it out loud. I don't want to appease to big pharma. Right. You know, right. we have. Uh, right now, we're talking about mandating a flu shot in order to go to oh. school. Mm. Um, I'm not gonna. Uh, we don't have. We don't have I'm time to go there. But you know, it's. One. Those are interests that yeah. don't suit all Vermonters, right. and they only interest that only suits a few. Yeah. So I'm more of an so everybody. How have candidate. you been managing to get your word out to talk to people? That's tough. Because in COVID, um, that is just uh, not. I've tried anybody. Facebook. I know yeah. not everybody's on Facebook. I'm not a big social media guy. I'm you know Gen X, a little on the, <laughs> little on the old school method. I have been going and knocking on people's doors. Have you getting off of their porch and standing six feet away? I am not wearing a mask because who's going to trust a right. masked politician? Right. Um, have they been receptive? Yes, they have. Oh, good. I've talked to because I know of some folks. people are just they're afraid to do it and they don't want to get people mad at them. I had somebody ask me to. Oh, you're close enough. He wasn't masked. Um, yep. I totally respected it. Right. You know. Uh, but yeah, I've been making it a. a, a a necessity to you know right. knock on right. a door and get off their porch. Yeah, you know. Because what yeah, I think you you mentioned before, what is Washington Five? Um, Middlesex and East Montpelier. Oh, just the two. Well, in East Montpelier, you got to ride a little between houses too. Yes, <laughs> oh my <laughs> Quite goodness. Quite a bit. There's yeah. There's a there's a, some distance. Yes. yes. Yeah. So um, and then they're being receptive. You said it. Uh, that's I'm what I'm just. I'm getting some reception. I had somebody yesterday just said, "Nope, I'm not," because I was told not to. And I thought, well, people in Rutland are doing it, and they're getting good reception. Yeah. Because I think we we expect it. I, I I've expect heard that somebody... Vermonters expect a politician to knock on your door, yep. especially if they're running. And I apologize, I haven't been able to get to everybody. Yeah. I am trying to do some homesteading. I'm yeah. getting ready for winter. I right. also work. This is not easy. No, it's not. And I think when I ran for the house uh, two times for my town, I started in March knocking on doors. Right. And, Which is what I should have done. <laughs> yeah. And well, but it, you know, you just take it. And the, the woman before me, she got around twice. I, I'm thinking to myself, wow. How, when did you start? Um, but she started pretty early, mm -hmm. like, um, and just kept going around. If I could get to every door, that'd be great. Beforehand, uh, it's not going to happen. Right. There's some three thousand. Close right. to 3,000 homes we in just my district. T time it so they're not home and you just leave something on their door. I have been <laughs> leaving a card. <laughs> yeah, I have I've good. set up a door knocker yep. if someone's not home, give people a little yep. bit of information about so what's what going on. What are you hearing from them? That's the, oh, I, we almost oh, ran out over. of time. Um, but very quickly, what are you hearing from them that are problems for, the, for them? The economy. Yeah. The economy, the economy, the economy. Right. A um, lot of, I've, just about everybody I've talked to does not like the Global Warming Solution Act. Um, Interesting. Taxes, economy, and the global warming. Interesting. Thank yeah. you very much for being on the show. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. And in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites.